The beginning of the end of the Ming dynasty. Corruption reigns all around. To preserve the dynasty, he sets up guards in brocade robes, or Jin Yi Wei. Their leader is a strong fighter known as Qing Long, which means green dragon. He always carries with him a box containing 14 blades that help him cope with tasks from ruler Ming. Prince Qin once led an army into a failed rebellion, for which he paid with two legs. Now he is planning a rebellion again, along with the eunuch Jia Jing Zhang. Qing Long is given the important task of retrieving the safe and he obeys the order. Qing Long has a hunch that people are following him, so he sneaks into a secluded spot and sneaks up on Jia Jing Zhang himself to retrieve the box. The man says he would rather die than surrender to the corrupt authorities. Qing Long takes the man's son hostage and is quickly frightened afterwards. The man shows the emperor's seal, which was hidden in the box. He says that it is Qing Long's duty to guard it with all his might, but suddenly arrows fly into the building and wound everyone. General Xuan Wu condones the incipient disturbance. He is prompted to kill the captured man and gives the sword to one of the prisoners for a fair one-on-one -on -one fight, but the prisoner quickly loses and ends up on Xuan Wu's sword. Then he throws the sword to the next prisoner and he frees himself, after which he attacks Xuan Wu like a berserker. In the end he loses and the man lunges at the standing officials behind him, but only runs into the girl's shawl. She skillfully dodges each of his blows and then sends him into the wall. The man bleeds after such a blow, but still finds the strength to get up and continue the fight. She literally splits in the air from the high speed. The man only gets her mirages, so he can't even wound his attacker. Except that after her attack, the man does not immediately survive. The girl introduces herself as 2020, and she says she will help Jia get rid of Ching Long. The men ask for proof that she really is Prince Qin's daughter. The girl removes her outer clothing and shows her shoulder tattoo, after which the men are left with no questions. A girl named Chao Hua is betrothed. Her father does transportation. Ching Long comes to their transportation office and says there is a job for them. When her father says they have just closed, he hands them 300 silver coins. Ching Long promises that they will get another 300 when they are finished and passes out. They are very close to bankruptcy and so they agree to the deal. Chao Hua rides in the wedding carriage with Ching Long. Chao Hua's father learns that Ching Long is wanted as a traitor. An acquaintance of Chao Hua's father inspects the carriage twice, as he remembers that the girl got married last year, but does not notice Ching Long there. The mercenary himself is in a very bad condition and most of the time just sleeps. He manages to sleep it off, and when they leave town, the girl's father treats him to some aged wine that is good for bruises. Chao Hua tells him that she wants to help her father, since unfair situations have often happened to him, she believes in a hero who would make things right. Chao Young, meanwhile, is confronted by brigands who have already set their eyes on his fine wine. The brigands get cheeky and brazen, but when they stomp on the flag, Chao Hua can't stand it and beats their ringleader. Ching Long intervenes in the fight and with just a single slap disperses the fools. As soon as one bandit sees the imperial seal, he kneels down, begs forgiveness, and runs away. Soon he reports it to the enemy and is killed simply by taking advantage of him. On the way, the soldiers do find a wagon where Ching Long is supposed to be, but instead he finds a crossbow inside, and he jumps straight down from the trees onto the soldiers and splits them in heaps with his sword. Chao Hua sees that he almost gets shot and she beats the crossbowman, soon Chao Young himself intervenes and helps them in the fight. Ching Long faces a more dangerous opponent, with a sharper spear. It is as if he is from another world, his technique too bestial to be wielded by a man. Even a horse falls from his blow, but Ching Long stays on his feet and continues to fight him. The crazy man becomes a training bag in the hands of the skilled Ching Long, and after a good thrashing, he robs the man of his oxygen and seemingly forever. Ching Long takes one of the surviving soldiers and uses the blades for their intended purpose. After two blades, he immediately gives away who orchestrated the whole thing. It is none other than Xuan Wu. He talks about the two murdered brothers and mentions the girl 2020. Ching Long lets him live, asking him to tell him that Ching Long is dead so that he can be left alone. The man goes to the crowd and Chao Young says he refuses to accompany him and then Ching Long takes Chao Hua hostage. The girl immediately tries to escape while the man is in the bathroom, but Ching Long is trickier. Noticing an attempt to escape, he ties a bell to her like a cow. In the evening they stop for a halt and the girl falls asleep staring at the smoothness of the water. Ching Long approaches and discovers that she was only pretending, as she instantly slaps him on the head, but he is not offended and simply goes to sleep at his place. Chao Hua and Ching Long stop in the same town to have lunch. Ching Long pounces on the food with his hands, but the girl quickly pulls him away and asks him to eat properly. Suddenly they discover that they are left with no money at all and the man gives them a gold medallion for a simple lunch. The girl grabs the horses, saying that they can have them for the money given. 
Ching Long and Chao Hua go swimming, and the girl decides to ask him about his past, namely how he became a guard in brocade robes. Ching Long recalls how he and the other orphans were simply taken from their cages and recruited as guards. The girl convinces him that he could have been a free man, but there is nothing more valuable to a man than to obey the emperor's orders. Chao Hua spills the beans about her husband cheating on her. She believes that hope is followed by happiness. They can all choose their own path. That's what her mother used to say, and that's what she wishes for them with Ching Long. He walks up to her and looks into her eyes. Their lips reach for each other, but it is not the kind of longing after which people kiss, it is something akin to curiosity, learning about each other so that they can kiss each other afterwards. Followed by 2020, she ends up in the same settlement where they had lunch the day before. Ching Long and Chao Hua arrive in the territory of the Celestial Eagles. Ching Long offers to buy the girl new clothes for her, and she agrees. The man can't take his eyes off her, so beautiful she is in every garment. He asks the girl to come to the guards to deliver an important letter. Ching Long himself is away on business. The girl comes to the guard and does exactly as the man said. The man who reads the letter attacks the girl and orders the men to attack her, but she remembers Ching Long's phrase and repeats it after him. This instills confidence in the men, and they begin to fear him. Ching Long discovers all the terrible plans that are going on behind his back, and the men do realize that it's not Ching Long but the girl in front of them, but then the culprit himself appears and helps the girl. He sets a trap for those who are looking for him and notices the girl. He watches with a telescope and sees that she has stolen something important for him, and then he notices that someone is also looking at him. They stop at the same place for lunch and also decide to sleep there, but their meal is interrupted by a gang of a guy who has been watching Ching Long. He says he will take down the hole in for the night. He introduces himself as the judge of the desert and asks them not to touch the group of merchants whom the girl has robbed. The guy attacks Ching Long, but he only defends himself silently. He unwraps the plate and says that when it lies down, he will overthrow the young man. It turns out to be so, so he gets angry and draws his sword. Ching Long does not defend himself at all and is nearly killed by the sword, but still stands firm. He offers to join forces in attacking the merchants, only he doesn't want the gold at all. The boy asks why he should trust him, and Ching Long pulls out one of his daggers, swings it lightning fast in the air, and cuts through the pillar that held the stretched roof in place. This supersedes any words. The guy agrees, but asks what it is that Ching Long is looking for, if not money. The man answers briefly and clearly, dignity. The gang turns around and leaves. Ching Long asks the girl why she didn't leave. Chao Hua tells a touching story about her fiancé, but Ching Long is rude to her, saying he used her and doesn't need her anymore. The girl leaves, barely able to hold back her tears, and the man goes to a cafe. Tuo Tuo sits down next to him and asks him about his loneliness. Ching Long pours her a drink and shares his concerns. She answers in disguise that it isn't easy for his enemies either, as she got to know him as a friend and it's harder to kill a friend. As everyone leaves the cafe, she pulls out her weapon and attacks the man. Her blows are so fast and terrifying that the man has to jump away from her. She resembles an angry snake, but Ching Long is not afraid of her at all, on the contrary, she attacks first. Blades from the briefcase come to the rescue, but Ching Long has to flee, as this fight may drag on too long. He disguises himself and arrives at the trader's bargain. The officials start an argument and Xuan Wu betrays his master, he goes over to Mr. Chin. The gang that Ching Long has been talking to attacks the building and the guards come out. The guy shoots explosive ammunition at everything. He is so skilled with his blade that he throws it like a boomerang and rips the crowd's throat open. Ching Long removes his disguise and attacks the cowardly Xuan Wu. He starts acting like a rat on a sinking ship. He is very afraid of the strong fighter and looks for excuses for his nefarious deeds. They want to stop him, but the desert judge arrives in time to cover Ching Long's rear. Xuan Wu escapes, which was quite expected. The desert judge takes the gold, and Ching Long goes to the wagon and sees the trap. Chao Hua was sitting there with something like a snake, but the man repels the attack. Of course, it was set up by Tuo Tuo. Along the way, it turns out that Chao Hua's father and his friends have decided to help Ching Long in retrieving the seal. They are afraid of a war that will not be avoided if the seal reaches the end of its journey. Xuan Wu notices Ching Long and orders his men to dismount to follow him. They run after him through the canyons. At a fork in the trail, they order the men to split up. Ching Long sits on top and silently watches the men sneak up from below, thinking no one can see them. They go at each other, and Ching Long only adds fuel to the fire and throws dynamite between them. Because of the raised dust, they can't see each other and open fire on their own soldiers. The rest of the soldiers are simply pelted with rocks and die in the rubble. Now Xuan Wu can't escape and Ching Long goes straight for him. After a few blows, he ends up on the floor, 
right in front of the tip of the blade, and gives the man the seal. He cries and presses for pity, asking to be killed, reminding him of their brotherhood. Ching Long forgives him and leaves, but he immediately raises the blade to his back and the man kills the rat. Tuo Tuo attacks Chao Hua, but then the judge of the desert appears and saves the unfortunate girl. He confronts the snake and it manages to wound him. His hand bleeds after just one skirmish. He defends Chao Hua's escape and is left alone with the mad Tuo Tuo. She wounds him once more, and after his boomerang attack, she takes his dagger. They collide for the last time. Unfortunately, it's not Tuo Tuo's last. Ching Long sees through Tuo Tuo's telescope and is upset by the death of the brave desert judge. Ching Long sees Chao Hua off and she tells him that she rejected the proposal as soon as she saw her fiancé. She wants to wait for him. He stops her and gives her one last hug. Ching Long has to run into Tuo Tuo one more time. This time one of them is sure to die. They hover in the air and the girl manages to land the first blow with a rock, after which the man does a clever trick and wounds her in the shoulder as well. This angers her and she sends him away, but he has a trick in store for this too, he pulls the mechanism and the girl is hit by a large beam. They continue to fight, paralleling Ching Long's lowering of the gate, but the girl does break free and threads the man with her spear. He stabs her through, too. They continue to fight and deliver critical blows to each other, after which they are both unlikely to survive. She punches the man, but he wraps his arms around her, opens his briefcase and three sharp knives fly at them, piercing them through. Ching Long recalls everything, how he served as a guard, how he lost his brothers, recalls his whole life. Chao Hua makes his way through the desert to the general of the west and still delivers the seal. Prince Qin kills himself without waiting for the death penalty. He is said never to have wept once in his life, but on hearing of Tuo Tuo's death, he drops a tear. An honest man came to power. Ching Long's sacrifice was not in vain. Chao Hua said that before he died, her father revealed a secret to her, his wine is not for wounds, it is for him. A guardian of justice must exist. The girl recalls all the moments with Ching Long, and his last words. He said that if she rang the bell, he would appear. No matter what he said, truth or lie, she would still believe him and do it. That's what love is, along with hope. And to have hope is great happiness, as her mother used to say.